I'm an avid reader. I read maybe about three to four books a month, uh, but I'm a slow reader. I took over the leadership of the book group uh, just the beginning of this year. So it was already established uh, quite a few years ago, I believe. Uh, I also have a new activity that may be of interest to you, you know, broader because of the uh, restrictions on meeting in person, we can't have our monthly luncheon meeting. So uh, we do it on Zoom and we started out with breakout rooms where for like the first 15, 20 minutes, people would just be broken off into different groups of maybe six or seven just to discuss things that were happening in their lives. And after a few months, some people thought that maybe it needed to be a little more focused. So we started doing different breakout sessions. And I started a session, which I just call it recently read books. So this isn't like the regular book club where you choose a book per month to read and just discussing books you read in the, during the month and it sparks interest for other people that maybe who are looking for something to read. Uh, you know, to find out something of that nature. And we have people sitting on that that don't belong to the book club. So I'm, I'm considering whether we want to continue it because it has a pretty good response. Um, pretty good meaning maybe about 13 people. Um, and it's, uh, it's a good size just for having a, a discussion on that. Uh, outside of SIRS, I belong to a mystery book club that book club only has four members, um, but I like the genre and I, this late October with COVID uh, travel restrictions dying, we're gonna have a mystery book club convention nationwide. They have it every year called Boucheron and it's gonna be in Las Vegas this year for five days where mystery writers gather and have panels and it should be interesting. I haven't attended it before. But everybody's different. So I'm an avid reader. Some people may not read that often. I'm sorry, go ahead, Norm. Yes, I have a question. Uh, is this co-ed, your book reading club? No, actually, we took a vote on it <laughs> maybe a year ago, I think. We had a book club, and we have oh, three and three, three women, three men. Yeah. And I, I think it works out very well because the women have a lot to offer. Books I've read that I would never or any of the guys would ever read they were excellent. There's a lot of different, uh, you know, ways to do this. We also, well, we had the lunch in person. Uh, and I think some of the other uh, groups do this too. We would have people bring in books and we have a book exchange and there's some members to that book exchange. And we'd have boxes and boxes of books on maybe three or four tables. And people would just come around and, just pick any book they want to take it. There's no, it's not a lend, lending situation. They just take it and keep it. And then other people are continually bringing in books they've read and they donate it. So it's a self-refreshing activity. And I'll say that at least doubled the number of people that belong to the book club participated in that book exchange. So there's a lot of people who don't want to join the formal club who also like to read. And that's another activity that's, uh, actually very popular. So in setting up a book club, in a sense, the first question gets to what Norm talked about earlier, and that's like, uh, how do you set up a, an activity? Now, I have no idea how the book group was originally set up here, but there's, there's basically, just generally, there's two ways to set it up. Because like Norm, if you wanted to set up a book club, you would, you would be doing it kind of like as the Big Sur or somebody on the executive branch uh, setting it up. But you can also have it where some individual is interested in setting something up. So how you handle it depends on who's starting it. Is it the executive committee starting it or is it just an individual coming up with the idea uh, of either a book club per se, or maybe a branch off from, uh, for a different genre. 
I'm going to be available, you know, if you need any, want to ask me anything personally later on, uh, fine. I'll give you my email address. I'd be happy to respond. And uh, secondly, if you'd like just an outline, the outline that I'm having here, then either I can send it to you or somebody at the state branch. So you, you need to, if you're going to start it up, you need to find out who's interested. So you send out like an e-blast or something, just talking about the, you know, the book group in general. Now, if it's somebody who's coming up with an idea to begin with, say somebody comes up and says, I'd like to set up a mystery book club. Well, then you have the topic already. It's going to be mystery books. That person's probably going to lead the session. But if you're just starting from scratch, you need to find out what type of books you're going to be reading. So you, you probably do a general survey to see who's interested at all. And then also what type of books they're interested in. So you solicit suggestions on what books they're interested in fiction, nonfiction, both specific genres, like mystery and science fiction. And then there'd have to be a decision made as to, based on the response, whether you do it with uh, one book group or you may even ask, come up and think maybe you need a split. So our group has what I think is, for me, the best um, combination. We have, I'm an eclectic reader myself, and somebody mentioned earlier that sometimes you, I think Norm said, you know, when he has the, uh, the women involved, you, you start reading books that you never would have thought of before. Um, and I find that interesting, you know, to find something I maybe don't know about or haven't read before in that genre. So I like that. Uh, so we alternate. We, we have like a year's worth of books that we select, and we alternate between fiction and nonfiction. Now, we have a lot of people that just really like nonfiction and are not thrilled with fiction, but they deal with it, and sometimes they find something they like. But also, you know, this is... Uh, something where some people who say we're not interested in fiction may just attend the sessions on the nonfiction books. So it, it goes back and forth. So our group has maybe, our group has 30 members. At any one point, for when we were meeting in person, we probably had about 23, between 20 and 23 people attend. So membership is maybe about a little less than 10% of our branch. Um, so there needs to be just an initial decision. What kind of books are we going to be reading? Then you have to find out, you know, what are the most, when will most people show up? The day of the month, what time of day do, would they be willing to attend? And uh, like I say, at the end, if enough members respond positively, significant variance in interest, you may determine whether one book group will suffice. So once you've gotten the response, whoever's in charge would develop a contact list of the members that showed interest, usually the name, the phone number, the email address. Then you determine the day, week, time to beat each month. And then you need to find a venue in which to meet. So that's going to be also a function of the size of the group. You know, if you only have six people, then you can deal with a small meeting place. So we have, like I say, 30 members, usually 20, 22, 23. So we currently meet at a a round table pizza. They have a room where we can get a tables put together. And uh, so we have basically a round table discussion. So it, it, it basically is just big enough to fit us in. 
And we have a real challenge now, obviously, with COVID. So when we're able to get together in that type of venue again is really, is really questionable. You know, where you sit, you know, we couldn't space like six feet away uh, in that type of venue. So the only venue that, and I haven't found one yet. So, you know, we're still all talking about when we're going to do indoor activities again and how to do them. We had one session where the uh, round table wasn't available or on an emergency session. We, we went to gather the round table. Nobody came to open the door. Um, so one of the members was like a, a church deacon and there was a church nearby. We went to the church meeting area. It's a wide open space. So it's big, they have multiple tables. That type of venue, it actually would work because you can get certain, you get a lot, maybe enough tables and chairs spaced sufficiently apart that you could hold it. But we haven't figured out yet or even tried to that aspect. So we're, you know, like everybody else, uh, we're just meeting on Zoom. Ron, I was going to ask you how the how the Zoom meetings, uh, how did those work for you? Like I said, we had we have 30 members. We had 22 or 23 that attended in person. There are, say, I'd say, seven, eight, nine members who just dropped completely. They don't have a computer. They Some people just don't like to use Zoom. They don't like the idea of virtually meeting. So we wind up with each session, I would say between 12 and 15, which is still, you can get a really good discussion going on. Uh, and I will say this for our group, what makes it so exciting, the, the mystery book club that I belong to outside, four people. The mystery books don't lend themselves to as much discussion as others. So we're meeting, we talk about the book maybe 15 minutes, and then the rest of it's socializing. So, you know, we know each other, finding out how we're doing, everything like that. So it's very informal um, that way. Um, but the members, we have such a diverse group of people in terms of opinion about a book. So there's no book we've had <laughs> where everybody says, oh yeah, this is really good. The characters are great. The writing's great. There's always conflicting points of view, the meaning of the book, uh, how well it was written, uh, just all over the map. And I find that very useful because I learn things or I see different points of view about something I've read and I can just say, yeah, that's an, that's an interesting take on that book. You know, I hadn't thought about that. So I find it uh, extremely good. And I can say, I like the fact that we are alternating between fiction and nonfiction. And so we get a variety, you know, books. Some of the books we're reading now are uh, classics like a Hemingway book or Camus the Plague and others are more recent. Um, so uh, I think that for me is is really the preferred, personally, the preferred uh, way, you know, to choose the books. Um, so once you find the venue to meet, you know, that's out of the way. So the members who have shown interest, then what we do once a year is we send out just a, uh, an uh, email asking for nominees for the next year. And we usually for us, and again, it depends on the numbers of people you have, you know, a very small group you may want more uh, books from them. If it's a large group, you may limit it more. So we usually have members nominate maybe four books in each category, fiction, nonfiction, 
So then the chairman gathers all the nominations and categorizes them and develops a consolidated listing. So this is the most time consuming task that the chairman will have during the year. So usually what we do is we break it down by the author's name, book title, a short summary. So the summary, I, I haven't done this yet myself. So the previous chairman, what he did, he would go on amazon.com and they usually have like a small summary in there and he will just copy it and maybe edit from there to get to a reasonable size to put in uh, in the consolidation. And he also listed a number of pages because some people just don't want to read a really long book. Uh, we had Walter Isaacson's Leonardo da Vinci, which may have been 800 pages. We just finished reading David McCullough's Path Through the Sea, which is about well over 600 pages. So people voted for these, but the number of pages gives people an idea of how much time they're going to need to devote reading the book. So then, after all the uh, nominations have been consolidated, that consolidation is sent out to all the members that are on the contact list. And then we request that they vote for a specific number of books in each category, fiction versus nonfiction. And then, so they vote for a specific number of books in each category. So maybe if we send out, depending again on the size, we usually ask maybe for three per category to vote for it. Or they can vote for three per category or four per category. So then we select the books to be read in the coming year based on the number of votes each book receives. So it's very simple. Uh, we don't do like weighted average. We don't do like all the number ones and weight number one higher. It's just if they were selected at all. And then if there's a tie, so we're choosing 12 books. If say for the last 12 selection, there's like two that have the same number of votes, then we'll just at the next meeting do a tiebreaker just by voice vote come up with the final list. <clears throat> so when we have the final list made, we solicit somebody to volunteer to review the book. So in our group, we'll discuss the book for maybe about 40, 45 minutes. And then the and the discussion, I mean, it depends on how the discussion is going, but normally we go pretty much the full time. Then, then we have whoever researched the book give, a, uh, give us information about the author, the books they've written before, you know, uh, some of their personal life. And uh, they'll go on Amazon maybe to see some critiques that have been made by reviewers, not by the people who are reading the books because that's a wide range and there's no rhyme or reason to them. But they have, like again on Amazon, they'll have uh, information about who really thinks what about the book. Um, and you know, other sources probably from like New York Times, other other areas, but somehow they get that together. Um, and then at the end of the session, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So I'm sorry, so we, So 10 is just really soliciting the uh, 
researchers. Most of the time, it's going to be somebody who nominated the book that was selected. And usually we don't have two people review in the same year, but if you're a small group, you may have to have more than one person do the review. So after uh, getting the research, we sent out the final list of the books to be read that includes the name of the author, the title of the book, and the researcher for each month. So then at each month's meeting, we send around like a sign-in sheet. There's a printed sheet of the members and they just check off that they're here. Uh, we make any announcements that we need to make. Then we just open the floor for discussion of the book. And for us, it's a free willing discussion. We just start off and say, Is any, you know, who wants to start or something like that. Um, somebody always starts pretty quickly. And then people just chime in as they feel like it. Um, so there's not really that much moderation actually going on. Um, except, you know, trying to maybe keep the timing in, in place. What I found recently on Zoom is that when I'm seeing people, you know, I have the gallery view and I'll see people and I'll, I'll be noting who actually has said anything. So maybe after about a half hour or so, I may chime in and ask what somebody who hasn't said anything thinks about the book and try to get everybody's opinion. And I think that works pretty well. So again, after maybe 40 minutes, 45 minutes, the researcher will make his report. And then we do a poll where the attendees rate the book on a scale of one to five. Then the last step is we have the researcher write up a short report of the meeting, how people reacted to the book, um, what the rating was for the book, and then also uh, mention what the book is going to be next month and invite anybody who's reading the monthly newsletter to uh, join and give my name and address. So that's pretty much, you know, the cycle that we go through. Um, and like I say, for us, it works well. We have really good responsiveness. But again, there's a, you know, there's all sorts of variations that pe people can make on how they want to set this up. So does anybody have any general questions? Can you give me your email address? Sure, it's Ron Gizemboy Rizzo at gmail.com. So I also have like lists of books that we've read, if anybody's interested in that. You know, it's difficult for me to uh, write down all these emails to all these people. Can someone get the emails together and send them out to the people who attend these meetings? I don't see any place where there's emails in the handout that I got on the email from Lee May. Can Lee, not Lee May, but Lee Moy, is it? Yeah. Hey, Lee, are you there? You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, I, I don't see any emails at all in here. I'm going to put Ron's email address on, on, on the uh, chat so that you'll have that, that. Just give me a second. But I meant, Ken, did we just send this out? Rather than taking time to write emails down during a meeting. By the way, is this is this uh, recorded and going to be on the website for sure? Good, good, uh, good question. I think uh, it is being recorded, so I, I assume I'm not sure what the procedure is, but I assume it's going to be available on the state website. So the other thing I have, I also have like a guide for the researcher, you know, whoever's chosen for that month. Uh, kind of like what their duties are when to send in the review. And I usually read the review before it goes to the newsletter. I may make a couple edits, grammatical or whatever. So that's a personal choice that I review it first 
the previous chairman just had them send it directly to the uh, whoever's in charge of the newsletter directly. But I changed that slightly. Hi, uh, question. So, so you actually have what a, a section of the newsletter where you talk about the book that you guys... The way our newsletter is set up is pretty extensive. And there's, you know, I think, you know, we ha again, we have a big, a big group. So we have people who are very knowledgeable on, run on running a website, on doing the uh, computer technology available. So in our newsletter, they, Big Sur has a column, Little Sur has a column, there's like a calendar of activities. Then for each activity that we have, all the activities, there's a monthly report. So the committee chairman's picture is there. Um, they'll say what's going on. They'll have their email address so people are interested and want to contact them. Uh, so it's 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 not short. I guess I'm trying to so say you just have a column for the book club for one of them, or you have each club have their own? For the branch, we just have one book club. Okay. And we just but if we had two, we would have like a separate act. It would be a separate activity. It'd just okay. be right. So we have several golf activities or hiking activities, wine activities, but only one, only one book group. If I go to branch eight, can I find the email of the people who did the presenting? Do they have their email on the website? Yes. I mean. When I say that, like, when you say, so you have, if you're on branch eight, yeah. I'm looking for you. And order, can I find your email there? Okay. What I would say is if you're on branch eight website, there's a newsletter. Yes. Go to the newsletter. Go to the, if you go to the newsletter, then scroll down, you'll see all the activities. Yes. I'll be there. there. All the activity chairmen are there. Their emails are on there. They're on there. Good. Thank you. Mm-hmm.